Today's message, the title of today's message, if you're taking notes or if you're watching online, today's title of the message is called Don't Hold Back. Don't, don't Hold Back. And one more time, I just want to say good afternoon. My name is Mark. If this is your first time here in person watching online, I'm the senior pastor here at Victory East Glasgow. For the last three years, God has been building his church. I want to take this opportunity just to welcome you all again this afternoon. You know, I'd like to say hello if you're watching us online today. You know, we know that a lot of people check us out online first through social media or Instagram or websites or even on our Facebook platform right now. So if you're watching with us right now, I want to just take this moment just to welcome you. And we'd love to really look forward to seeing you one day with us here, worshipping Jesus together. You know, I want to start today by asking you a question. Who loved cartoons when they were growing up? Yeah. Who still loves cartoons even right now? <laughs> Come on, somebody shout out your favourite cartoon when you were growing up. Hey Arnold. Hey Arnold. Tom and Jerry. Tom and Jerry. Scooby Doo. Any others? No, okay, that's as far as we're going to go today, but. I can't get my mind that far back. <laughs> but you know, when I was just thinking about it today, there was, a, there was a lot of cartoons. I remember Tom and Jerry was always a classic. You know, there was uh, Danger Mouse, if you remember oh, Danger Mouse, Mouse. Roadrunner. Yeah. Funny enough, I'm going to be mentioning the Roadrunner in a minute, actually. Uh, Thundercats, well, was anybody old enough to remember Thundercats and D Man? Anybody remember D Man? Alright, you know, Gary's looking at me all strange, like, <laughs> you're a different generation to me. Um, but, you know, cartoons are really funny, but sometimes the stories are like Bat Fink, you know, we go Bat Fink. Alright, keep the rest of them for later. But, uh, <laughs> But as I was preparing this message, and I was preparing this message, and I was reminded of a classic episode of Roadrunner. Roadrunner. And you know, Roadrunner, his, his enemy, his, 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 his you know, opponent was always Wiley Coyote. And I, was, I remember this episode one time, I was watching him, and uh, Coyote's chasing Roadrunner. And you know, he's chasing him, and for some reason, I can't remember how or why, but they end up on this airplane. <laughs> they end up on this aeroplane and, you know, um, Roadrunner gets in there and Wiley Coyote is chasing him. So Roadrunner gets into the aeroplane, Roadrunner sees this parachute and so he puts the parachute on and proceeds to jump out of the aeroplane. And you know, if you know anything about the Wiley Coyote, he's a bit of a hothead, he doesn't think, he just steams straight in. And so he sees Roadrunner jump out of the aeroplane and so he just jumps out straight after him without putting a parachute on. And you can guess what happens in the cartoon. You just see him just falling. And you know, if I could put the cartoon, you know, sound music in there, it'd be like... <laughs> he, just, <laughs> he, he, he just hits the floor. And you see this cloud of dust, right? And the cartoon's just coming straight up. Right? Like Wiley, Wiley Coyote, he's done it again. He, he's just ended up with dirt in his face again as usual. In the heat of the moment, he doesn't think. He just jumps out and does something straight off the bat and pays consequences for it later. Come on, somebody say ouch. But how many of us, especially maybe us as parents or grandparents, how many of us you went to put some toast in the toaster? Right? And you put the bread out and you put the toast in the toaster and something happens and you go away and you come back like a couple of seconds later and you go back and you remember that some, you forgot to put the toast in. Or you put the toast in and you forgot to switch it on. Or you put water in the kettle. And you go away and like, listen, I've done this a few times in the morning time. We have a, a, a filler coffee machine. And sometimes I've come down the stairs in the morning and I've been so tired. That I've put coffee in, I've put the filler in, I've put the coffee on top of the filler and I forgot to put water in. And so I switch it on and I come back through like a couple of minutes later and there's no coffee coming out, but all I can smell is burning. <laughs> right? Of just the coffee grains just burning in the heat. Um, and so uh, and so I'm saying all that to say that is that, you know, sometimes in our life we do things without thinking. We do things without getting wisdom. We do things with we go in the heat of the moment we do things in tiredness. We do things in moments where we don't think we can do things and we can sometimes suffer the consequences later or sometimes we don't see the desired result that we had hoped for. Like the toaster in the toast machine, you put the toast in it, you walk away, you come back, then you realise that you forgot to activate the power. 
that your bread is still bread and it's not reached the toast stage just yet. You know, I don't know what happens with us, but as parents of three kids, like sometimes you make a cup of tea, a cup of coffee in the morning time and it's sitting there, but then school happens, school run happens, phone calls happens, and you go back to that cup of tea and back to that cup of tea, and it's frozen. So you spend half the day warming up cups of tea and cups of coffee because life just happens. You know, so today I want us to turn in our Bibles today. We're going to look at a portion of scripture in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 17. We're going to, today we're going to look at a portion of the words of Jesus that can help us sometimes when we face situations on our own strength and our own wisdom. Rather than, de- rather than depending upon the strength of God, the power of God, the activation of the power of God. And sometimes when we charge ahead and do things on our own strength, we don't see the results that we desire or we know that we can achieve. Matthew chapter 17 verse 20 from the New Living Translation reads like this. Jesus told them, I tell you the truth. If you had faith even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move from here to here, and it would move. Nothing would be impossible. Somebody say nothing would be, come on, somebody say nothing would be impossible. The beginning of this chapter, chapter 17, begins with a very familiar story called the Transfiguration. It's a moment in time where Jesus, where he takes uh, takes three of his disciples, he climbs up to the mountain to experience this encounter. It's all you can call an encounter. And so Jesus takes the three, Peter, James, and John, he takes the three up the mountain, (laughs) to experience a mountain top encounter. When they're up on the top of this mountain, again, they experience a three. They experience Jesus, Moses, and Elijah. And so they're there on this mountain top experience, this highlight, this exposure to the presence of God, to the, you know, to Jesus in all of his glory, and Moses and Elijah. They're there, and while they're there, Peter, who I really love Peter, he always steps in, put his foot in, and speaks up first. Hallelujah. Some of us can amen and agree right here. You go really love Peter. Peter's the first to speak again. Yeah. But I want to just encourage you, if you are a Peter, Jesus took Peter to the mountain. So if you are a Peter, and you do put your foot in it sometimes, and release words and say things that you shouldn't, there's hope for you. Because out of the twelve, Jesus took Peter to the mountain top. Amen. And so while they were there, Peter says to Jesus, Isn't it wonderful here? Let's build some shelters and stay here. Why am I sharing that with you? Because in just a few verses, the number three is mentioned three times. Last week we just celebrated our third anniversary. In this portion of scripture here, you've got three disciples, you've got, you've got Jesus, Moses, and Elijah, you've got there, and you've got Peter saying, let's build three shelters here, let's stay here, let's bask in the glory, let's bask in the moment, let's enjoy ourselves at this moment, let's congratulate ourselves, we made it to the top of the mountain, let's enjoy it, Jesus, I just enjoy it, I, I love the celebration, so let's just park the pretend. Let's just spend time here. It's beautiful in your presence. It's great up here. Why? Because we're away from everybody else. There's no drama here. There's no demons here. There's no addiction here. There's no all this. It's just us. And so as I was praying and asking God, God, what's your next step? What's the next word? What's the next thing for our church after this birthday, after this celebration, after this mountaintop experience? And after I started reading and praying, he showed me the scriptures here. And he said, listen, it would be easy for us as a church. It would be easy for us as pastors just to celebrate and high five each other and say, we made it. We reached three years. We reached the peak of the mountain. We celebrated this great year. Let's just wait here. Let's just camp out here. Let's just build some tents here. Let's stay away from all those who are at the bottom of the mountain. Yeah. 
But this is a word and a lesson for us today from the scriptures. That last week we celebrated our third anniversary of the church. But listen, we've climbed some mountains together in the last years. Disciples have been exposed to the greater glory and the greater presence of our God and our Lord and our Saviour. And it could be easy for us to park up and say, oh, we're growing a little bit. God's been faithful to us. We've got some singers. We've got a keyboardist now. Hallelujah. You know, we've got people. We've got kids. You know, we've got camera. We've got good things. We've got all that. We've got all that. We, we could just take a moment and just rest. But the mountaintop experiences are there to give us vision mm. for the future. They're not places where you park up and rest and build shelters. Because mountaintop experiences, as we see in the transfiguration, the times of encounter and the times of his presence are to fuel us for the journey ahead. They're to encourage us and remind us and celebrations are good. But as Peter was saying, let's stay here at the top of the mountain. But here's what, what here's why Jesus says they can't stay there. It's because on the other side of the mountain, on the downside of the mountain, there was a family in turmoil. There was a family with a demonic son. There was a family who was in trouble. And I came to tell us today, Victory Outreach, that we can't just stay on the mountain and celebrate our achievements. We can't just stay on the mountain and just park up and put our shelter and just stay where we are. Listen, we need to come down off our mountain. We need to come back down into the valleys, back down into the streets. Why? Because there's broken families, there's parents, there's mums, there's fathers, there's situations, there's sons addicted, there's families addicted, there's people in the prison cells. They're waiting for us to come off the mountain. They're waiting for us to come down and to reveal Jesus to them. You see, we can't just afford just to roll up, get blessed, and go home as if everything's cool. We roll up, we get blessed, we encounter Jesus, then we go. Then we go reach, then we go teach, then we go train, then we go equip. They come down the mountain in this chapter here, chapter 17, they come down the mountain. And you can imagine it, oh man, what an experience that was, wasn't it great? Oh man, I wish we could just park up and stay there. And the first thing they come upon is a family with a son who's in trouble. Mm -hmm. Can you share with us today, Victor Outreach Glasgow, that we celebrate three years, praise God. We celebrate encounter. We celebrate climbing the mountain. We celebrate seeing Jesus. We celebrate all these things. But listen, the real, the real, the real, the real work is on the other side. And so it's not a case of holding back. But as they come down this encounter, as they come down off the mountain, they are family in turmoil. However, they could not overcome the next step without supernatural faith. This is what brings us to the scripture. They come down off the mountain, they experience a son who's, who's demon possessed and terrorized. And the disciples have been laying hands on them and trying to cast out this demon, and the demon wouldn't leave. And Jesus comes down and he rebukes them. He casts, he speaks to the demon, the demon leaves, the boy gets up, it's all well. And then the Bible says afterwards, when everybody was gone, you know, the disciples didn't want to embarrass themselves. So they waited until the crowds were gone, and then they say to Jesus, Jesus, how come that could how come we couldn't make that? How come that couldn't work for us? He says, This I tell you the truth. You don't have enough faith. He says, if you had faith even the size of a mustard seed, he says, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it would move that nothing would be impossible. And see, so what we see through this scripture here in Matthew 17, verse 20, we're going to see Jesus address the problem, we're going to see him give the solution, and we're going to see him show them what the results will be. And while this uh, scripture was directed to the disciples' failure, the verse still contains powerful truths for us today. Are you ready? I want to share three truths with us today. Number one, the problem was where their faith lay. Where their faith lay. At this point, the disciples have been walking with Jesus for quite a time now. Back in the beginning of Matthew chapter 10, 
few chapters before, seven chapters before, Jesus already gave them all authority to cast their evil spirits and to heal every disease. So he's already empowered them. He's already given them authority. He's already given them the faith, the authority. Sorry, he's given them the authority to take care of what lies ahead of them. But if you ever came up against a stubborn situation, you've been praying over a certain issue, a certain, a certain, a certain opposition, a certain something, and you're praying, and you're praying for that thing, or you're praying for that person, or you're praying for that loved one, and you're praying for them, but as you're praying for them, and releasing words for them, you have the devil on your shoulder say to you, that's never going to happen. Yeah. What are you even praying for them for? Yeah. <laughs> right? It's like a little cartoon back in the day, when you go back to cartoons again, like a little cartoon, you've got the angel on one shoulder, you've got the devil on one shoulder, you know, who are you going to listen to? And sometimes we come up against stubborn opposition and stubborn situations, and sometimes we, we have this mindset of, of, it's never going to work, it's, it's, it's always going to be this way, and maybe that's been you lately, maybe you've been facing situations and facing opposition and facing struggles, and you know that you know that you should be through it and you can get through it, but you've been hearing the opposition say to you, it's never going to work, you're never going to break through, it's never going to be that way, right? So it, it, we, that, that happens to us. But faith in God and faith in Jesus isn't believing that we can do it, mm. it's believing that He can do it through yeah. us. Yeah. You see, one of the problems we have, and there's a, there's a big difference in that statement, one of the problems I have, one of the scriptures, and I'm not saying I'm a problem with the scriptures, but uh, the scripture says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, right? Powerful scripture, we've all shared that, we've probably quoted that, we've probably prayed over our lives. But for me, the problem, not with the verse and not with the scripture, but with our application of that, is that it starts with, I can do. Yeah. I can! <laughs> And so the faith that we're not careful believes that we can do it. When in reality we can do it when God does it through us. And so sometimes as we're walking with God and we declare that I can do all things through Christ, you know, it's a, a powerful scripture. But we have to always be grounded to the fact and the point that only God can do it, that God can do it, that God can move it, that God can heal it, that God can change it, that Jesus yes. can do it, that Jesus can heal it, that Jesus can move it, that Jesus can break it, that Jesus can deliver it. Mm. Yes. But he can do it through you yeah. or for you. And so sometimes as we walk with God, our faith can be misplaced. Our faith can be misplaced. And when you misplace your faith, we tend to limit God. When we miss, what I mean by misplacing our faith? Well, just like I said a minute ago, when we start to face situations with I can do. And sometimes in that I can do all things, we forget God. We forget that it's Him that does it. We forget that it's Him that moves. We forget that He's the power. We forget that He's the strength. Has any of you ever misplaced your car keys if you've got a car? Right? Misplaced your car keys. Or maybe misplace your house keys. If you misplace your car keys, right? Some of the people are laughing at me right now. They know I'm talking to you, right? You misplace your car keys. You can't drive that car. It's got the potential to reach 120 miles an hour. It's got five gears, maybe even six. It's got windows, AC, aircon, radio. It's got potential. But listen, if you misplace the key, all it is is potential. When you have a house and you lose your house keys, you can be standing at that door looking in the layer box thinking, that's my house in there. It's roasting in there. The, you know, the heat is on in there. I need to get in and switch the heating off, right? The TV's in there. Your fridge is in there. Your cooker's in there. Your bed's in there. Your shower's in there. Your kids, well, hopefully your kids are in there. Your, your pets might be in there. But if you ain't got the key, if you've misplaced the key, all it is is hope and potential. You can stand and look in and you can stand and face it and you can stand and claim it. Well, that's my car and that's my home. But if you misplace the key, all it is is potential. And the key to all of this is faith in God. 
Not faith in me. Listen, I came to tell you, listen, don't have, don't, don't have faith in me to switch your situation. Don't have faith in yourself. Because when I was back in the day, my, I got myself in quite a, quite a few mess. I got myself in, the, in the quite a few situations. And so as we walk with God, our faith in His power and His strength needs to be first. So that's why Gary shared his testimony earlier. When God is first and we seek Him first and we pray first and we put Him first and we say, God, you first, God, you at the center, God, your direction, your guidance, your wisdom. You know, I said to somebody earlier, you know, sometimes what happens is when we look at opposition and we look at situations, sometimes our faith gets reduced to the size of the opposition, to the size of the challenge. And we start looking at the challenge and it's stubborn and our faith starts to decrease and the opposition starts to increase and we start to look at it and we start to think that that's never going to happen, that it's never going to budge, that it's never going to shift, that it's never going to change. And our faith starts to reduce, our faith gets misplaced. There's potential to see change, but because we've misplaced our faith and our faith has became in ourselves, and our faith isn't in the God. When we misplace our faith, we limit, the, we limit the power of God and the potential that God has to change situations in our lives. And it's easy to misplace our faith sometimes. Your faith to come to church, your saving faith. But when it comes to faith to give, faith to serve, faith to do what God's called us to do, some things we can place that, misplace that. And when it comes to faith, it's more quality rather than quantity. Let me say that again. When it comes to faith, it's more quality rather than quantity. Because listen, I've heard people talk big. I've heard people say, I'm going to take the world. I've heard people say, I'm going to be this and I'm going to be that. They talk big faith. Okay, don't tell me about your big faith. Show me the quality of it. Show me the quality of it. Show me the, show me, show me the goods. Show me that you're still going to be here next year. Show me that you're still going to be around next week. Show me that you're faithful and committed. The second thing is, as Jesus shows us the problem, that our faith can be misplaced. The second thing and the solution is, is that faith has to be released for it to become active. You see, a mustard seed is only around one centimeter in size, but once planted, has the potential to reach heights of 30 feet. Seed has potential, but seed has to be planted in order for it to fulfill its potential. You can have a bag full of mustard seed, but if you don't plant them, if you don't release your faith, then it will never grow. And some days we miss the miracle of God due to the fact that we fail to release the mustard seed of faith. You see, some days we think we're not big enough, clever enough, wise enough, you know, have, have, have enough in order for good things to happen in our life. But this scripture tells us here, and Jesus tells the disciples, he says, listen, it's just a small seed of faith that's planted and that is put into the ground. If the seed is planted, it has the potential to become reality. As David squared up to Goliath on the battlefield. David squared up to Goliath on the battlefield and he planted his feet in the ground and he focused, what's this? Not on the size of the opposition, but on the size of the God behind him. And he held five seeds in his hand and he says, listen, I may be smaller. Looking at the situation, you may be bigger, you may be bolder, you may have more armor, you may look bigger than me. In fact, you definitely look scary to me. But listen, I know what size you're going to be, but I come to you in the name of the Lord, and I know the size of my God, and I'm going to release my sling, I'm going to release my seed, I'm going to release some in Jesus' name. And as we know, the rest is history. Hebrews 11 verse 6 says this, Without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. 
I don't know about you, but I want to please God. I want to please God. And faith pleases him. Faith pleases him. The widow in the scriptures that Jesus saw, as he was talking about giving, he sees the widow with two mates, with two coins, and he, he saw her faith. Then as she released her faith, it caught the attention of Jesus. Did you know there are two times in the scriptures that says that Jesus was amazed? Two times, both times they were to do with faith. One, the faith of the centurion man who came to Jesus. Jesus says, I, I was amazed, I've not seen faith like this in all of Israel. And the second time he's talking about being amazed by faith was a lack of faith in his hometown of Nazareth. I don't know about you, man, but I was praying last night and I said, God, I want to have amazing faith. God, I want to have amazing faith that catches your attention. I want to have amazing faith, God, that stops you in your tracks. I want to have amazing faith. I don't want you to be amazed at my lack of faith, God. I want you to be amazed at my faith. I want to be someone who has amazing faith. We sing about amazing grace. But how about we become people of amazing faith yeah. that stop Jesus in the tracks and he might say, I know you don't have much. I know you don't seem like you've got much, but I see that you're willing to give. I see that you're willing to sow. I see that you're willing to do but you know, everything that you can do. I want to have amazing faith. Faith that amazes Jesus. Amen. Faith that stops him in his tracks. And says, this guy's punching above his weight. This guy's praying prayers that are above his pay grade. This guy's attempting stuff. This guy's attempting to walk on water. Come on, somebody. I don't know you, but I want to have amazing faith. Man, this guy's believing for stuff that's way outside of his realm. But because his faith is pleasing me, I'm going to release it to him because it's faith that pleases God. God, who wants to have amazing faith? Yeah. Amazing faith. Yes. The Bible says faith without works is dead. Yeah. And so that faith in this big, ginormous, all-powerful God should then lead us to then put our faith to work. And the results of Jesus telling them this, the problem and the solution was this. The results of having a mustard seed of faith is this, is that nothing will be. Watch this. Nothing, nothing will be impossible. Impossible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, too many to think of. <laughs> impossible. Impossible able. <laughs> okay, I played a bit with the word a wee bit, but you know again, nothing will be impossible. <laughs> now you know you're going to say that every time you say impossible again. Nothing will be impossible. <laughs> Jesus tells the disciples that faith release has the potential to move the biggest obstacles facing us. Mm. See, I don't know what we're facing right now. All of us were probably facing something that's bigger than us mm. and ourselves. We look at situations and think, well, I need a breakthrough there. How's it going to happen? Maybe you've started to get a little bit dejected. Maybe you've started to kind of look at the situation and that's getting the better of you rather than you getting the better of it. Maybe we're looking at opposition and, 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 and things of houses and jobs and incomes and family and breakthroughs and things like that and sometimes we can look at them and because they've not came straight away we can start to kind of come down and our faith starts to, to, to diminish a wee bit and the situation starts to seem greater and we stop praying with the fire, we stop praying with the faith, we stop understanding what Jesus is telling us. Listen, he's not literally saying that you can walk up to Mount Everest and cast it away. I'm sure there's people try that. But rather as a picture or a parable or an image that shows us that when we face giants, obstacles and barriers, but when we face them with faith, mm. that through faith in Jesus, 
We can see change. We can see opposition defeated. We can see freedom. We can see deliverance. We can see breakthroughs. We can see open doors. Again, we need to learn from David that we don't look at the size of the mountain, but we look at the size of our God. And I know when I look at the size of the need around here, I look at the size of the city, I look at the size of the nation, I look at the size of the drug problem, I look at the size of the madness, I look at the size of, of all the things that we face in the society today. It would be easy for us just to look at it and say, oh, it's too big for us. Oh, yeah, it's too, it's too much for us. We can't do that. We can't handle it. We'll leave it to somebody else. We'll, we'll just kid on it's not there. We'll just shy away and just have our own little church in the corner and we'll just keep ourselves to ourselves and we'll praise God and all these different things but that's not the type of ministry we are and that's not the type of people that we are that we know there's a big problem out there we know there's big situations out there we know there's big struggles out there we know there's big realities out there we know there's big barriers out there we know there's big giants out there we know there's big things out there that face us but hey listen I can you tell you today my Bible tells me my Savior tells me that in the words of red that if I have a seed the size of a mustard I can face opposition I can face giants I can face mountains, I can tell them to move, I can tell them to change, I can tell them to shift, I can tell them to break, I can tell them to open, I can tell them to flee, I can tell them to run, I can tell them to pick up. He says nothing would be impossible. <laughs> But seed needs to be released. Seed needs to be released in order for it to take harvest, to, to take root, to grow. And as we face these next three years, as we face these next years, as we come off that mountain today, as we celebrate our three years, but we know on the other side of the mountain, on the other side of that birthday, on the other side of that celebration, that even right now as we speak, there's families with sons in turmoil, there's people getting sent to jail tomorrow, unfortunately. There's people in prison right now, hanging themselves and doing all these things. There's people right now in hospitals that are paying the price for overdosing. There's marriages that are falling apart. There's homes that are being wrecked by alcohol there's prison systems that are crowded there's not enough recovery, there's not enough rehab, there's not enough opportunities for people, there's not enough cell homes care homes, there's not enough these things there's not enough people caring and loving but listen, what can we do? we can be a church that says we don't hold anything back I'm not holding anything back don't hold back give your all Get involved. Become part of God's plan. Become part of God's mission. Lay it all down. Take your seed and plant it firmly. Believe God's able to change your situation. Believe that you're able to speak the situations in faith and in faith in Jesus. Faith that he's your saviour. He's your strength. He's your portion. That we stand before Goliath and we stand before our situations not in my strength but in the strength and in the name and in the power of Jesus Christ when we stand for him, when we stand in him, when we stand for him, when he begins to work and move through us, I'm telling you, we will see things shift. Somebody say, don't hold back. Don't hold back. Today, we would recognize that the worship can come back. Today, we would recognize that God is with us. That he's for us. That he goes before us. It might change the way that we're looking at our opposition. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 2 and 3. This is a promised scripture for the ministry, the Victor Outreach in the National. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 2 and 3. He says, I will go before you and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness, the hidden riches of secret places, that you may know that I, the Lord, who call you by your name, am the God of Israel. You see, our God is a God who goes before us. He goes before us. And what, what does he go before us to do? 
to give us treasures of darkness to cut in pieces to break in pieces the gates of bronze and cuts the bars of iron what does that mean? that means that he goes before us and he destroys every obstacle he destroys every barrier why? because he loves the hidden treasures he loves the he loves the, the treasure he loves the broken he loves the, the needy he loves all that thing and he goes before us he makes a way he made a way for you to be here. He made a way for me to be here. Man, he cut down <laughs> so much to get to me. God's given us promises that he'll go before us and he'll give us them. But we need to go with him. We need to do our bit. We need not to hold back. We don't need to be afraid. We don't need to just look at the size of the problem and become little. That's what happened to the spies in the book of Numbers. Right? They saw, they saw the land that it was full of, full of fruit and full of grapes. And they went, oh yeah, but it's full of giants too. Out of all the spies, only two came back with a good report. You see, he did. I, I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you how it is. Yes, there's giants here. Yes, there's going to be things that we need to face. Is it going to be a walk in the park? No, it's not. But it's like, my God, I'm telling you, there's so much fruit ahead of us. There's so much promise here. There's so much potential here. There's so much what we could have there. I know, me and my wife, we're not the eight. We're the two. And we'd love for you guys to be part of that. Let's close your eyes for a moment. As they just play this song and lead us in a place of worship. Lord, we just need you today, God. As we take our place with your promises as we fall in line with your word that reminds us just mustard seed of faith just faith in Jesus not faith in me not I can do what he can do through me I'm 
remains today. I want to remind us today as Jesus was reminding the disciples that it's faith in Him that changes things. That we need Jesus. That we can't just go off of experience. We can't just go off of wisdom. We can't just go off of last year's breakthrough. That we need him. That we need to believe that he's able. And just that faith, that small mustard seed of faith, that looks nothing, that sounds nothing, that feels like nothing, but all when it's released and planted, when your faith is firmly in Jesus, you can speak to those situations. Speak to those oppositions. Speak to that mountain. You know, I want to encourage somebody today that that mountain has been speaking to you. That mountain has been stubborn. It's been looking and staring you down the bottom. So I'm not moving anywhere. Maybe you've just retracted a little bit. Maybe you've just stepped back a little bit. Maybe you've just lost feet just a little bit. I want to just encourage you today. Plant that seed again. Have that faith in Jesus again. Speak to that mountain again. Trust him that he is going to go before you and that he is going to level the mountains.